Yo, what's up? James Ismeen, a.k.a. Stickman, from the infamous band Fury of Five, straight out of Jersey, you know how it is. Uh, can you tell us about uh, how Fury of Five, how PA treated Fury of Five? Well, our first show, you know, was at CC's, and uh, the response was overwhelming. And throughout the years, PA became like our second home. Like, like when we played Jersey, the response was just unexplainable. The, the, the violence, the, the, the pit, just the, the antics was out of control. And that filtered over into PA. So when we played anywhere in PA, whether it was 15 kids, 100 kids, 500 kids, it was bananas. It was just like playing Jersey, you know, and it was awesome. PA has always been uh, a great state for Fury of Pop. It was awesome time. The first show I, was at CC's, which was a great show, but the show that, like, our when we played Philly, and I forget the name of the bar, do you remember the bar? It was on South Street. Was it Pontiac Grill? Nah. Is that the one where you threw the dude out the window? Nah. <laughs> No, 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 that was at CC. I think I bounced the sound guy into the wall. <laughs> Some, I don't know, yo, I know I punched the, 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 the owner from Scarlet's in the face. And, <laughs> yeah. But it was a, it was a bar on, on South Street, and we played there with All Out War, Stark Weather, and it wasn't a, a very big crowd, but honestly, when we played, the reaction was insane. It was so violent in a small club. It, it was definitely like one of the shows that stood out in the early days of Fury of Five. As, as we progressed as a band, that, that shit just went bananas, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we just got a little following and people came to, to maim and destroy. Yeah, yeah, well, you, you know, I met, you know, Richie Crutch. Actually, Richie Crutch had seen me earlier before Fury of Five in another band called Position of Power. And when he saw me at CC's, he was like, yo, you that dude played with Life of Agony, blah, 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 at the Stone Pony. I was like, yeah, you know, and then, you know, throughout the years, you know, Mad Joe Black, Richie Crutch, Carl, you know, Chris Nanico, you know, we just like family, yo. We play shows, they come to Jersey, we play, you know, try to look each other out, and we just bonded. And even now, you know, in 2012, we're still friends and family, you know what I mean? The, the OPA scene is very tight, man. It's been, like, it's been the same faces since I started Fury 5 in 1994, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's awesome feeling, you know what I mean? And me, it's real special because I'm a BFL family member, you know what I mean? So, you know, brothers for life, you know, it, it, you know, PA is like my home, it's like my second home. If I could move out here, I'd be out here. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I got my son and shit, so, I, you know, I stay in Jersey. But uh, hopefully one day I hope I'm over here with my family, you know what I mean? Uh, box cutter, um, you know, when Fury 5, you know, broke up, I went on a hiatus, you know what I mean? You know, I was depressed, you know what I mean? I, I, I was doing music since I got out of the system, you know what I mean, in, in 1990, you know, I went through a couple bands until I finally started making strides with some, you know, dudes from Jersey and Fury of Five, and then, uh, you know, we broke up in 98, and, you know, it really hurt, you know what I mean, and, you know, I, but I, you know, I gave it up for my son, about 2000, I got a call from Rich, he got my number from somebody, you know, we started talking and politicking, I wanted to do music, I just didn't want to do the same with Fury because I knew I couldn't top myself. You know what I mean? The band was one of a kind. So he sent me uh, four songs that were crutch material. He wanted me to sing on them. So I was I was like, listen, I got this idea for a rap metal band. You know, let me let me give it a whirl. So I wrote all the lyrics out, structured it out. You know, Mad Joe was the second singer, so it evolved into box cutter and we dropped the first EP, Thug Rock, and then we dropped two full lengths after that. And now, you know, even as we're interviewing right now, my man Mamu talking about dropping another third one. So, you know, box cutter, people like it, you know what I mean? You know, it's not you know, people look at me kind of funny because, it's, you know, I'm not screaming angrily and, and you know, and, and, you know, bringing that violence that I once did, you know what I mean? But I'm not even that same dude, you know, I'm not as angry as I used to be, you know what I mean? I got a little kid, I can't be displaying that kind of nonsense in, in front of my child, you know what I mean? So, you know, I grew up a little bit, you know what I mean? But, you know, 
still the same dude, you know what I mean? But you know, Box Cutter is, is all uh, all Pennsylvania people. Plus I started Deep Root of Hate with another dude, that ex-BFL member, I'm not gonna mention his name, but the band was called Deep Root of Hate, but you know, that, that fell apart because of drugs or whatever, you know what I mean? But it, it, it could have been something, I was really pushing that band too, you know what I mean? So, you know, my, you know, I don't think my time is gone yet, you know, I just, just waiting for the right people, maybe I'll make a comeback or something. <laughs> What exactly uh, happened in Scarlet's that night? Ah, oh, man, that was wild. Bro. <laughs> but if you know Fury 5, yo, we were just crazy on some respect shit constantly, yo. We weren't the best band, we weren't top-notch musicians, but we put our heart in the music, and we made that shit come to life. You know what I mean? And people felt that. And, you know, when somebody disrespected us, it didn't matter who the fuck you were, we beat up our own tour manager. You know what I mean? We went around just maiming bouncers, you know, people, white power skinheads, you, you name it, we, we were savages. So this old man, we was coming through the front door, me and Jay, as the other band was loaded from the back, and the man stopped me. And I said, yo, but we're playing, that's a merch table right there. And this motherfucker pushed me. <laughs> And just from reaction, you know what I mean? Like he jacked me hard. I'm like, this old man's, this old man's out of his fucking mind. mind. Yo, so I, I lit him up, man. I split his whole fucking shit open, man. Oh, he's like 60 years old. Just it sent him crushed our merch table. And the other bouncer looked at me like I was crazy. He's like, you gotta leave. And I was like, all right. We just backed up and left. <laughs> You know what I mean? No disrespect, I hope I can't get charges with that shit now, you know what I mean? But I lit the whole fucker up, man. It was, it was a reaction. It wasn't like my intent to hurt an old man, you know what I mean? He pushed me and it was just like, you know what I mean? So, you know, shit happened. <laughs> Do you have uh, any other fond memories of CC's? Like, any, any particular night stick out? Oh, yeah, it was one night when the when the owner didn't fucking pay us. And, uh, yo, we stole Marshall cabinets from this dude, <laughs> monitors, yo, and our drummer, he had, we, if you know us, we used to be riding around a crazy ass van, right? This dude had, like, Nice rims on a just a like a I don't know just the body of a car, yo. And we took the rims off and, and, and put them on the van and shit, yo. We were just just crazy, yo. Just good, anywhere we went was just wild. You, you just never knew what the fuck was gonna happen when Fury Five showed up, yo. Pennsylvania, PA hardcore, keep it real. You know what I mean, like. The, Besides, you know, New York Hardcore is its own entity. It's been around for years. But PA, I don't think there's any other scene like it. And like family and tight knit. And, and when you go to shows, it's always the same people that you've seen at the last show from 10 years ago, from two weeks ago. You know what I mean? It's just a good, good, good vibe and a good place to be, man. I love PA, bro. Oh, but, you know, PA till I die, son. <laughs>